Hello, sweet peep. How are you guys doing today? Hello, daddy. How are you doing? Let's celebrate our 10,000 followers. Thanks, family. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, dad, to be with us all the time that you can. Yeah, so What's amazing. Yeah, so amazing. 10,000. That's a lot more than I was expecting to be by where we're, by the time we're this time. Um, uh, but yes, I'm excited to get going. I know we've kind of slowed down on some of our, our classes or, um, and uh, hoping to get picked back up again, yes. But uh, my day's been good. Work is picked up. Uh, so we've been busy. Um, so thank you for having me again. And how was your day? Oh, I had a good day. I watched uh, some movies. I could have time for that with my mom, my friend. It was a really good day. Actually, we watched uh, three movies in a row. <laughs> That's wow. a lot. That's a long time I didn't watch no more. But today, do. it was the day, a rainy day. And uh, movie day. That's a good day for a movie day, a rainy day like that. Yes, I could have time with my mom. It was really good. And a friend. So good day. Amazing. Oh, look at that. Yeah. We're See? On our, way, our way back from Honey Island. Yes. That was a really good trip. No? Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. I've mean, never experienced anything so, so beautiful. Yeah. So it was so good time. Yes. So, and uh, yes, we had a really good time there. We even uh, had a, a trail, yes, side by side. Long trail. A long trail, no? <laughs> yes. All the way up to the lighthouse and back. Yes. It was amazing. And I, um, we talked to a native there, and she said that uh, what was that one of the resorts was closed down because the water had receded so far. Oh, uh huh. Remember? Yes. Yes, I do. As our government is telling us that the water is rising in the oceans, and then you, I go down there and they say that the water is receding. What do you believe? <laughs> well. Yeah, it's so different. Mm -hmm. Our tides are way bigger than your tides, too. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. yes, yeah. yes, I see. Ours move about 20 feet up and down. Yours only moves about five. Mm -hmm. That's a yes. big deal. A big difference, no? Big, big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How wide there are big waves, no? Yes, we get big waves. Um, mm -hmm. Bigger than yours, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. They will pumble you. <laughs> no, yes. Yeah, you can serve them a lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. My, my, my part of my family have visited Hawaii. Oh, and, yes, uh, they have huge waves in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I've never been. They say so Hawaii. Good. Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Hawaii. Wee wee. It was on a movie. Oh Hawaii. really? On uh, Transylvania, that cartoon Transylvania. Oh uh huh. She's like Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know. So Great. what? Uh, yeah. What are we uh, discussing today? Yes. Yeah, so yes. Today you have a lot of vocabularies that people. Uh, need to know about uh, job interview yeah and uh, are you ready to start i believe so as ready as i can be yeah let's get you prepared for your next job interview in this section you'll learn all the job interview you need to sound fluent sound professional and sound natural at your job interview are you ready to add 50 plus advanced expressions to your vocabulary that you can use when you're attending a job interview in English. Let's get started. Uh, let's get started with the first uh, that you can be asked. First one, tell me about yourself. It's not what, what they say that in the beginning, they actually, they ask you uh, your name, of course, and ask you how you're doing and where you're from. And then, yeah, basically, so tell me about yourself, all about uh, 
all about you. They want to know about you. So the best way to go about that is open up and freely speak about yourself. Of course, not every detail, but um, make yourself sound like you are um, wanted. You know, make yourself feel like you're worth. Give them, tell them your worth. Yes. And don't don't accept the first offer if it's too low for you. Like, um, uh, I'd say when someone, if you have a fluently, if you're fluent in two languages and they need that, uh, and they offer too little, be like, well, what's what's what else can you give me? You know, I was watching a video one time, and a lady was like, I can speak fluently Spanish, and then she's like, blah 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 blah, because they didn't give her enough money. And then when they raised it up a little bit, there was a little more Spanish that came out of her mouth, and then they raised oh. it up more, and then her fluent her Spanish came better, and then. When they gave her the price that she asked for, it was perfectly speaking Spanish for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah, that's one. It's really important to know. Tell me about yourself, a traditional one. So could you read the, this sentence, this phrase? I don't know. Yeah, that's phrase. I have almost 20 years of experience in the project management industry in my past. That's the same. So that was part of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you read this phrase itself too? So just tell me about yourself. That I have more than or over almost 20 years of experience in the paving industry, my job title, I was a foreman, paver operator, screed operator in the paving industry. Construction is what it would be under. So I'm highly qualified for all the all that you need for your, uh, for what position you're looking for or what I'm looking for, what you need. I can, I'm more than qualified for what the, for the person you're looking for. Yes. Highly qualified. Go ahead. So. Yes, good. You have a, a lot of experience. Yes, in your job for long yeah. uh, years. You're there, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even you had another experience before, no? You're in in your previous job too, no? Um. Yeah, I was a commercial fisherman before. Um, but I also have my CDL, my commercial driver's license, can drive anything. Um, so that also helps. I could do three people's jobs when they they would normally have to hire three people to do what I can do. I think I'm worth way more than what I'm getting paid because there's nobody else in my field that can do what I can do. No, huh? Yeah. You go ahead. Yes. When you're asking just this question, you absolutely must use the expression, I have more than over or almost 10 years of experience. And then you can add as a uh, and uh, your job title as a project manager, as an accountant. Don't forget that article, it's very important to that it's there before your job title. Now, you can also talk about your experience in a particular field. Example, I have almost 20 years of experience in the project management industry. I have more than 15 years of experience of in the IT sec sector. So you can use field, industry, or sector. Yes? Do you want to say something about that, Daddy? No, I'm okay. Yes. So you can use field, industry, or sector. Now notice you have more than or over that the number is greater than. And then you have almost that when the number is less than. So if you have 13 or 14 years of experience, well, 
it sounds better to use around number like 15. You can say almost 15 years of experience if you have 13 or 14. Now you can add to this and tell us more about your responsibilities in that role. So you can say in this role, which is your role as a financial analyst in this role. You could also say in that role. It doesn't matter in this, that role. I was responsible for, or you can say, I am responsible for, was if you're viewing the role as complete and I am responsible for if you're currently doing that role. I was responsible for. Now, after this, we need a different verb. So you can use many different verbs to talk about your experience. Could you read okay. this part? In this role, I was responsible for managing everyone or overseeing them, being a leader or leading my crew, coordinating as in um, like uh, symphony coordinating, just coordinating, making sure everything is put in together and nice and neat and meshing well, creating, creating, um, creating everything that needs to be put together so it goes together as well as it should be. We develop or developing our own material, reviewing everything together to be, make sure it's perfectly and put together before we put out the material. We improve or improving every, all, all of our management and our crew. We're constantly improving, streamlining. Streamlining, we have a team that does streamlining on the computer so that people can watch everything that they do. So we streamline. So I was very much in streamlining with some of my guys. And then we analyze or analyzing. So we people constantly are analyzing and making sure that it's perfectly orchestrated as we need. So yeah, I, I was in an important part of this company, being able to manage all of this together. Or just one out of the uh, bunch. You could say, I was a manager. I was setting yeah, yeah. up C. I was the leader or a foreman or just a coordinator, which worked under the foreman or create, or the creator. So there's a, you can do one or do all. I don't think a one person could do all. Not streaming and analyzing him, but definitely improving constantly. If you're not improving while you're, when you work somewhere, then you better find another job because you should always be improving. I think you should always be learning and you should always be improving. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Time to find a new job. If not, go ahead. So. Yes. Great. Good. Uh, good. Everything you told us, of course you can use other verbs as, but these are the most common. No. So is streamlining. This means improving. The efficiency, the effectiveness, yes. So as a financial analyst, you could say, could you read this part too? I have over 20 years of experience as a financial analyst in the IT industry. In this role, I'm responsible for overseeing a team of 15 people. And I, I am responsible for streamlining our operations that sounds professional yes that sounds very good i would like to uh hear more as a as a person that's interviewing you i would like to hear something like that that would be amazing go ahead yes yeah, so now in a job interview you absolutely want to use more academic or formal adjectives yes you don't use it to say Example, I have a lot of experience that doesn't sound very strong or convincing. 
it sounds a lot more impressive if you say, I have extensive experience, I have significant experience. So those are two must know adjectives that you should use in job interviews. Huh? Extensive yeah. and significant with simply is a more formal way of saying a lot of. I have a significant experience. And again, after this, you need a gerund verb. You can use any of the verbs I've already shared. And of course, you will have a specific verbs for your industry and your specific job title. Could you read this, that one? I have extensive experience creating international campaigns for a variety of industries. That sounds professional, I'd say. Yes, so now after this expression, I have significant extensive experience. You could also use a noun. Huh? I have significant project management experience. I have significant financial and analysis experience. So you don't have to use a gerund verb. You could also use a noun. Yes. And if you're asked about your education or your credentials, you can simply say, I have a Bachelor of Arts. I have a Bachelor of Science. I have a Bachelor of Arts, a Bachelor of Engineering, whatever that may be. Now you can end it there. But you may also identify the school and the year you graduated. Those aren't requirements, but if you want to uh, want a prestigious, well-known school, or recently you recently graduated, those might be use, uh, useful details to use. For example, I have a bachelor's of, uh, for science. I graduated in 2020. You can also use the verbs received or obtained, which are more formal than have, however, is extremely common to use the verb have. I have a bachelor, I have a master, but you can absolutely use received or obtained to use the more formal version. I received my master of education from Cornell in 2020. Yes. Would you like to mention something? Um, no, that's that's really good. You did a good job. I think that we clarified that pretty well. Yes. Yeah, what do you got next? How do you have 50 of these things? <laughs> oh. Yes, I completed my PMP in 2019. Do you want to say something about that? Title, that topic? Yeah, as for my strengths, um, my leading skills are not as strong as most, I would say, um, but I do good. Uh, my, but my strengths are, I would say, coming up with good ideas right on site, um, being able to fix what needs to be fixed to get us through the day without having to shut down. Um, I'm a good innovator, constantly coming up with uh, great ideas, new ideas, making things better, uh, work easier. So yeah, that's my strengths. I, I work well, fairly well with others, I'd say. I'm kind and I speak uh, the truth. Yes, you do. So those are mine. And a hard worker. And show up every day, don't call in sick. Ever, I never call in sick. I know that. Yeah. Can go ahead. Yes, you really do a good job in your job. And so congratulations for you. You are a really good one. 
good employee? Yes, I do a lot of work for them um, without getting paid as well, which I probably shouldn't do so much, but oh well. Yes, yes, you do, I know. Because of that, you're tired today yet, no? Yeah, I even got more to do still. Keep going. Yes, let's talk about uh, the, your personal strengths, as that goes. The interviewer is like going to ask you, what are your strengths? What would you say are your three best qualities? So here you can use uh, some words. And you could say, as for my strengths, that's just to introduce the point. As for my strengths, I am extremely. And then you can list the quality. Now notice here, I use the adjective extremely. This is a more convincing adjective than I really or very. You really can avoid those come adjectives because they don't stand out and it's way more convincing to use a stronger adjective in a job interview, like extremely. I'm extremely hardworking, which sounds stronger than I'm a really hardworking. Let's review some common adjectives that you're going to use. And for all of these adjectives, you're going to use the verb to be and then list the adjective. I am extremely hardworking, committed, trustworthy, honest, focused, methodical, proactive, a team player. For a team player, you can't use an adjective. You're simply going to say, I'm a team player. You're not going to say, I'm extremely team player. That doesn't work. I'm a team player. Yes, would you like to say something about that? Uh, being a team player? Um, no, I don't have a lot. To, being a team player is a great thing to have, though, because me, my, only I it does not work in a team. So you got to be able to handle and uh, recognize other people's strengths when you work with them and accepting their ideas and trying to work with them and see if they will work. I always like doing that with my crew. If they have a good idea, I'd like to hear it. And if, I, if it's not that good of an idea, I'd like to explain why to them, why I don't think it's a good idea or why it won't work. So, I mean, that's, I would say, is a good team player. But yes, make sure if you, um, you need to be a good team player to work in an uh, industry that consists of you working with others or even um, like trying to learn how to work with people, customers. That one's a tough one because a lot of them are grumpy or ignorant or they have no idea what you're trying to say. So they get irritated really easily. So you have to learn how to breathe and explain to them. And if they really irritate you, then you just send them to your boss. <laughs> I would say, go ahead, talk. Great, great, uh, what you told us to add. And now let's talk about some specific skills you should highlight in your interview. Would you like to say something about skills? Um, I'm not sure who... skills on what jobs or what I do. My skills are I can operate a paper. I say operate because you, anybody can run something. Running something means you can move it. Operate means you can actually do what it's meant to do. So I can operate a paper. I can operate a grade tractor or sheet loader. I can operate a bobcat. I can operate a milling machine. I can operate a, a dump truck. I can operate many pieces of equipment, an excavator. Back home. I am talented in many um, pieces of equipment. So, yes, I can run a grader or blade, we call 
the one that runs down the road and smooths out the roads, the gravel road, or a dozer, which I don't like running dozer. It's a really rough, bumpy, bumpy piece of equipment. But yes, I mean, be able to speak what you know and what you can run or operate or do is very important. And when you speak it, make sure you sound like you know what you're talking about. So don't fib because they can tell usually. And when they do tell, they will put you right into that position to see, to show you that yes, they knew that you were lying. Uh, we've had a guy come in and say they had five years experience in the mine industry. And as soon as the first day, first thing I seen the way he held his shovel, I knew he's never done it before. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. Instantly. And so yeah, don't lie about it. He didn't last long, just to let you know. Yes, yes. For sure. Yeah. It's a fun it's funny though to watch people come in and not do it. So go ahead, so Yes, great. Yes. So the following skills are the rated is uh, the top ten skills that employer wants. Of course, the skills are specific to your industry. So you can take this as a, a general list of skills that you, it, you could use to highlight the interview. And to talk about these skills, you can say, I have. And for an adjective, you could, can say, I have advanced, I have superior, I have excellent. And then you list the skills. Example, I have excellent time management skills. I have superior communi communication skills. I have advanced adaptability skills. The other top 10 skills are, could you read it? Well, oh, okay. I have excellent time management skills. I have superior communication skills. I have advanced ad adapt adaptability skills, problem solving, teamwork, creativity, leadership, interpersonal skills, attention to detail, and work ethic. I have a strong work that work ethic. I think they should teach that in school. In all schools. Go ahead, so. Yes, so this work ethic for that one, we have a very specific adjective and that is strong. I have a strong work ethic. So this is a specific expression for work ethic. I have a strong work ethic. Let's say you, you want to show off your communication skills. Could you read that for sentence? I have superior communication skills. Superior, keyword, superior. That's excellent. Why are you or why you're interested in this position? Is, I would ask you, why are you interested in this position? Yes, so now let's say the interviewer wants to know why you're interested in this pos specific position. You could say, I'm looking for an opportunity to further or to develop my X skills. So your project management skills, your teamwork skills, your financial analysis skill, whatever the specific skill is. You could also say, I'm looking for an opportunity to gain experience in, and then you can talk about a specific field, industry or sector in the IT industry, in the project management field, in the marketing sector. You should absolutely have a conclusion, yes? Don't just say, thank you for your time. You should leave them with a really strong impression of your skills and your ability to complete the job and be an asset to the organization. Yes, could you read that today? To have a conclusion, yeah. To, um, so conclusion, um, ending the interview with um, I believe or I know or I am confident that my extensive skills would make me a valuable asset to your company. 
or an asset to your team or organization. And I look forward to the opportunity to contribute to your goals or to your uh, foundation or to your um, to your opportunities of building this company. So yes, it definitely that's a good way of ending um, an interview. You make yourself and always hold your chin up high and um, don't don't drag, don't hang it down low. Speak loud and clear and to your uh, soon to be possible boss. Yeah. So I'd say conclusion is important as well. Go ahead, Saul. Oh, yes. So important. So I believe that, I know that, I'm confident that my extensive project management skills and adapt, you should uh, adapt it for your specific job, yes? For sure. Um, and always continue to use it. Another thing is, is when you work in your, in your uh, skills or in your business, always work like no one's watching. You know, because people are always watching. You might not see it, but they're always watching. And the thing is, is like I was reading a story one time and a guy was annoyed by his parents about how they were always on him, about shutting the doors to the house, picking up, pushing in your chair to the table, turning off lights when you're not in the room, cleaning up after yourself, or even if somebody else leaves something out, pick it up. I know a lot of people don't like doing that. Nobody does. but. Oh, yes, nobody does. Yeah, so as he did, it was instilled into his head that that's what you do all the time. And so it's calm, it was common for him to do. And uh, he went to a job interview. And as he was waiting for his turn, because there was a line of people going to this interview, he went around and he picked up. He pushed in short chairs. He shut doors. He shut off lights. Things like that, picking up after yeah. people. And because his parents instilled into this head, he instantly got the job without even the interview because they could see they seen him out there doing that and he didn't even know but they 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 recognize they see the potential this guy has and what he's doing when he thinks no one's even watching him so it's it's a great idea to uh, always work like someone's watching you but just they they recognize they recognize the kind of thing so yeah anyways go ahead Saul. yes mm -hmm. really good history yes mm -hmm. Yes. And anything else to share? No, I'm I'm, I'm okay. My body um needs to share. You okay? It it is true. All this stuff uh, is excellent, excellent stuff. No matter where you're at. Mm -hmm. Yes, really useful. Right? Yes, of course. You should take this and adapt it to your specific industry or role. But you absolutely want a strong conclusion statement to impress the interviewer. You are doing such a great job. And uh, in the next class, there's a very important section because in this section, you're going to learn over 50 transition words. Transition words are so helpful to sound advanced in English, but they're also helpful to take a simple idea, expand on it and make it more complex. So really pay attention to this section in the next class. And uh, thanks for coming and watching this video. And so you can increase your knowledge. And uh, don't forget to subscribe in our channel. Yes, Daddy? Yes, don't forget to subscribe and um, continue to follow. It's good to see everybody uh, that is following, that are back. Um, hopefully we can keep going more and more uh, on our on our videos so you guys can keep refreshed up on your English and uh, learn more because I'm actually learning with you. So this is great. Thank you, Saul, for having me again and um, hope to see everyone back tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Yes, bye-bye. See you soon. Yes. Kisses. Good night. Good night.